injured they are. And you just saw from Tony's report, they are now at University Hospital. And meanwhile, a massive police response as we deal with this active shooter situation in Newark. And Shannon, have you watched it grow? It, it almost seems like we're in a standstill right now. Shannon Soon? Sorry about that. This shooting happened at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So keep in mind, as you, you just said, like it looks like it's sort of at a standstill. Things are quiet right now. But what we can tell you, we've been over the scene since shortly after the shooting happened. It happened at 2. We were here at about 2.20. We got on the scene along with police helicopters. And what we want to clarify for you is what you were looking at here is a staging area. So these are the people awaiting directions. But we can also tell you we are not showing you the tactical positions of the police because we don't want to give away their tactical positions. We want to help them do their job, not hinder them. But what you were looking at is a small snapshot of what's happening around Newark. And what we have seen since we have been over the scene is the perimeter growing exponentially. It was first a block or two around the area. That has grown to three or four blocks around the area of interest. And while this doesn't look like there's a lot happening here, we can also tell you that there are several spots where we are seeing police taking up tactical positions, hiding behind vehicles, using armor, and pointed at specific buildings in this area. So it does appear that they have at least an idea of where the active shooter may be. Of course, that information could be wrong. We can't confirm any anything at this point, but they pushed this perimeter back significantly to keep the public safe. There have been areas where we've seen people out in the street, and as we've seen that happen, we've also been seeing police push that perimeter back further and further. As we mentioned, that Chancellor Avenue School is on lockdown. They're trying to get people to stay in their houses and just to, to reaffirm what we have already found out from Anthony and Tony. There were two officers shot, one in the leg, one in the neck, both taken to University Hospital, both in unknown condition at this point. But this is a very active scene and resources from around the county and around the state are being activated so they continue to search for this active shooter. Again, the impression that we get from looking overhead is that they have a very good idea of where they think the person is, but that is a matter of keeping the public safe and making sure that their information is accurate as they continue to search. Thank you, Shannon. Let's go back to Anthony Johnson uh, on the ground, uh, at one of a safe position, uh, we hope. And, and Anthony, you mentioned that uh, you saw some uh, people with the warrants uh, department. Uh, any indication from any of your sources that that, that may have led to uh, what, what occurred here? You know, we don't know at this particular point in time because anytime you have a situation like this, they bring out all forces. So everybody has responded to this scene down here. We just saw an officer walking up with one of the long guns. But like you've seen, and Shannon was talking about how all of the officers are pretty much staying back. A lot of them actually standing behind vehicles at this point in time. And when I initially got to where we're standing right here, one of the officers even said to me, you can't go any further because we consider this situation from here all the way down to Bergen along Chancellor to be a dangerous situation and as Shannon was talking about they have encouraged everybody that lives in this area everybody that's in this area to stay indoors as a matter of fact you might see an officer right now he's just jogging across the street pretty quickly but they've told everybody to avoid this area to stay away from the scene they're not quite sure uh, from here where the gunman is we can tell that at this particular point in time nobody can really tell where the gunman is but we assume that about a block and a half away that's where the initial incident occurred more police officers continue to respond to the scene out here on the ground i've seen police officers from nearby cities in Essex County. We're talking about Irvington and Orange, not only Newark, the Sheriff's Office, Marshall's Office. So everybody has rallied down here at the scene at this hour. We're just backing up a little bit as one of the officers passes out of here. So we're just waiting to see what their next move is going to be down here on the street. But like we said, two officers have been shot. We do know that Tony was talking about that a little bit earlier. One shot in the neck, one shot in the leg. We don't know what precipitated the shooting and the first place but we do know once again as shannon was talking about this all happened at two o'clock but you can see the scene is on lockdown it's going to 
late, it's going to stay this way, it looks like, for uh, quite a long time. And as we talked about, there's a school in the area. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of schools in this area. One did let out because kids were getting out of school right around that 2 o'clock time, so they were able to get out on the street. But once they started approaching this area, they made sure they didn't go any further. Another school down the street is on lockdown. It'll stay on lockdown as long as this situation continues to be out here. Once again, you can see officers all stretched out all along this roadway. Many police officers gathered out here at the scene after two police officers were shot a little bit earlier from Parkview all the way down to Bergen is on lockdown and everybody is waiting to see what the next move is going to be. We don't know if they're actually talking to that gunman at this point in time. We understand that they would try to negotiate with that person if they possibly could so everybody's pretty much on a wait and see mode at this point but like look at the officers you can just tell that they're staying back nobody is making any approach and if you do see an officer moving in that direction they are definitely carrying a long gun they have all of their equipment on all of their protection on to make sure that they're safe as they make it closer to that area so at this point in time everybody is on standby i just see one officer as a matter of fact he's wearing an AT. F vest, so we don't know what that has to do with the situation, but a lot of times when these things happen, officers from every, every district everywhere come to follow up especially when two police officers are shot so you could see a variety of officers at the scene who are professional in doing this and going down here and trying to go ahead and deal with this situation trying to negotiate with the gunman at this point so pretty much on the ground we're just holding to wait and see what's going on everybody has been told to stay back we're doing the exact same thing and everybody's waiting to see what is the next move uh, Anthony, no question, unsettling sights uh, to see, uh, you know, officers in full military gear in some cases uh, or various forms of protection uh, on the scene right now. Uh, you've been reporting to us. I don't know if you had a chance to talk to anybody in the neighborhood, but it can't be a comfortable situation with the, with that neighborhood locked down. Uh, you, have you got a sense how people are responding to the situation right now? Well, a lot of people have responded up here. They were trying to find out what was taking place. A lot of them walked up to the scene. They walked up to the yellow tape. They're asking questions. They want to find out specifically what's happened. Like I said, there's a group of kids standing right next to me. All of these kids are from Week Wake High School. This is a normal block that they would walk down on any given school day to go ahead and head home. So they're waiting for their next move to figure out what's going on. A lot of other people just came down here. They were trying to see what was taking place down here on the block. They're asking asking us a lot of questions. We're trying to answer as many questions as we possibly can, tell them what we know, but all we can tell them at this point in time, there's a lockdown situation down here on Chancellor, and anybody who's driving in this direction, because we did run into a lot of traffic trying to come over here, stay away from this area, the whole stretch of Chancellor. Just stay away from it, because we were on uh, 280 as we were coming off. There goes that ATF officer you can see carrying that long gun. He's walking away from the scene, but other officers are moving in the direction of where the point of origin of the story took place. So we're just waiting to see what all led up to this shooting where two police officers have now been injured, their conditions we do not know, one shot in the neck, the other shot in the leg.